and beginning with the 6th chapter and the 16th verse. And he said, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Amen. I like to talk about the wrath of the Lamb. Amen. The great tribulation, both halves of it, the first half, amen, and the last half, is the wrath of the Lamb. The last half is uh, the wrath poured out without mixture by the admission of these uh, great men, rich men, captains, mighty men, bondmen that hide themselves in the rocks and the mountains and cry, hide us from the face of Him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Here they declare that the first half of the tribulation is the wrath of of the Lamb. <clears throat> Amen. It is the great day of His wrath. Amen. i like for you to notice that in this sixth chapter, before these verses came into being, that six seals had already been opened of that seven-sealed book. Who is doing this anyway? Who is bringing all these terrible things upon this world anyway? Ah, yes. Let's go back. Amen. And we see in the uh, fifth chapter a seven-sealed book. I saw in the right hand of them it said on the throne a book written, and on the backside sealed with seven seals. God is holding in His hand a seven-sealed book. Amen. I saw, I saw a strong and angel proclaim with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? Amen. Now when we find out who opens this book and who looses the seals, we'll find out who is doing this wrath thing upon the earth. We'll find out who is causing this great tribulation. Amen. This terrible time of trouble. Amen. I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to, to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders, well, I'll say, amen, before a single seal in the book is open, there is somebody that made it to heaven first of all. There is somebody already there. Ah, oh, yes, amen. One of the elders, who are they? These elders, amen, they appear in the fourth chapter, amen. They are already uh, 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 sitting around the throne on twenty seats, Revelation 4 and 4. The Greek, amen, says that they are sitting on twenty thrones. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Well, what about that? Amen. The last promise to the last church in the third chapter of the book of Revelation is, To him that overcometh, verse 21, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcome, and am set down with my Father on his throne. Praise God. Ah, yes, there it is. Twenty-four elders taking their place in their uh, seats of regality. Elders are those first ones. Elders are those earliest ones, if you please. <coughs> and they are sitting on thrones. To whom are those thrones promised? 
is promised to the overcomers. Right away we see, praise God, that the elders are none other than the overcoming saints of God that have already been transported, praise God, whether you call it rapture, catching away, amen, escape, whatever you want to call it, these 24 elders, amen, taking their place, praise God, in their thrones in heaven, amen, have already made it. Who are they? Where did they come from? Amen. Ah, yes. Turn to Revelation 5 and 9. Amen. And listen. And they sung. Praise God. 8 verse says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden fowls full of orders, orders which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Amen. Right away we found that those 24 elders are redeemed. Amen. Angels are not redeemed. People only are redeemed. Amen. Well, praise God, Thou hast redeemed us to God by Thy blood out of every kindred. That means Collinses, Joneses, Allens, uh, amen, uh, praise God, Barkers, uh, man, I'm telling you, Johnsons and, and uh, uh, Smiths and uh, Grubbs and uh, Williams and, uh, I mean, every kindred, uh, praise God. <laughs> you just... Keep looking, you'll find your name in the family tree if you'll be faithful to the Lord. Praise God. Out of every kindred and tongue. Where did he come from? Every tongue. Amen. The Bible's already been translated into over a thousand languages. So we know these 24 are representative of a much greater group. Amen. They represent, praise God, every kindred. They represent, praise God, every tongue, every language under the sun. Amen. And listen, listen. And people, amen, they represent every kind of people. And nation, every nation, there's about 200 nations in the United Nations, amen, they represent people from every nation, so right away we see that the 24 elders are a representative group of a much greater number, amen, nations, kindreds, tongues, people, praise God. What a wonderful representation. Amen. There will be around the throne. Amen. Why 24? Amen. Under the law, the priests numbered in the thousands. Amen. There were 32,000 priests in the Old Testament at the start. Praise God. Amen. But they only ministered to the Lord 24 at a time. Amen. And uh, that was chosen by lot. Praise God. And uh, they each took their turn by lot. Ah, yes, now we get the idea that things in heaven, amen, were already in place before they instituted things in the earth. And that the things in the earth were copied after things in heaven, even the tabernacle, even the temple. Amen. There's a tabernacle in heaven as well as on earth. There's a temple in heaven as as well as on earth. Amen. And they were copied about after heavenly things. We see by their own testimony that these elders are representative of all the overcomers they're sitting on thrones. Amen. All the redeemed they say it themselves. Amen. They are elders. That means they are the very first ones. Amen. In the first resurrection. They have escaped. 
Luke 21, 36, and they stand before the Son of Man. Not a one of them is living on earth. Amen. But it is one of them that introduces the Redeemer. In other words, the saints will judge angels. The saints will rule with Him. The saints will be in vital participation with Him in the kingdom that we have prayed would come. Hallelujah. Wonderful day. Wonderful hour. Wonderful moment. The shoes on the other foot. It's not a bunch of crooks sitting on regal thrones now. It's a saints of the Most High. Amen. It's not a bunch of tyrants. It's not a bunch of heels. It's not a bunch of immorals. It's not a bunch of rejects, a bunch of ingrates. Amen. A bunch of mafia. It is the redeemed of the Lord, and they're going to say so. Raise your hands. Amen. And praise Him a little bit. Glory to God. One of the elders. Amen. Not only are they not present on the earth when the great tribulation takes place, they introduce the Redeemer. And, amen, that part of redemption. The book. The book. The book. What is the book? Some say... Amen. It is an inheritance that was lost, disposed away. They had to have a redeemer that was worthy to reclaim that inheritance. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God, by the time the redeemer gets the book, the thing to be redeemed is filled with squatters. The thing to be redeemed is filled with usurpers. The thing to be redeemed is filled with uh, uh, heathen and anti-God people, antichrist forces. Uh, amen. Uh, the world today is run by the devil. The Bible even calls him the God of this world. Amen. And then one of the elders said, don't cry, John. The line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. And I looked and I saw a lamb as it had been slain. He's worthy, the elder says, praise God. He's worthy. Ah, that priestly class declares glory to God. He is worthy to take the book and loose the seals thereof and reclaim the inheritance lost. What is the tribulation? It is God taking the world back right out of the hands of the devil and his crowd. Amen. But before he sets a flame thrower loose on it, before he turns his napalm loose on it, before he releases his atomic destruction on it, Amen. He takes his body out. I preached last night on the body of Christ. Amen. Before a miner in a coal bank, praise God, sets off the dynamite inside the mine, he, he takes his body out. Amen. Unless you're like one old boy that came to work one morning. Amen. All uh, sunned up and smoked up and, and bruised up. Amen. And he was digging his coal out of the coal bank at, to his house with. Amen. And he was uh, taking a shortcut and drilling him a hole and putting in some dynamite and blasting it loose. Uh, amen. Uh, and he didn't get far enough out uh, and he blew himself out of the mouth of his cave. With his dynamite. 
Amen. Came to work all scratched up, bruised up. Amen. Was doing drywall job on this house. Amen. Came to work all scratched up, bruised up. Amen. He blowed himself out of his, amen, out of his coal bank. Praise God. His dynamite went off too quick. Amen. I want you to know that Christ is smarter than that. Before he lights a fuse, folks, he's going to drag his body out. I say, that's what we would do, wouldn't we? Amen. We'd drag our body out. <laughs> Praise God. The church is his body. He said, pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape those things which shall come upon the earth and stand before the Son of Man. Amen. I mean, Jesus' legs is not going to be down here. <laughs> Jesus' hands and feet and body is not going to be down here. He's not going to blow his own leg off. He's not going to blow his own arm off. Amen. No, he's not going to unleash these terrible portents. Amen. These horrible wars. These awful things. Amen. Until he's taken his body out. And here they are before God, sitting on thrones of regality. Just like he promised they would. He that overcometh. Amen. I will grant to him. He'll sit down with me in my throne. Even as I have overcome. And will sit down with the Father in his throne. There they are. Praise God. Taking their turn. Hey, you don't have to worry. Our time will come. Amen. We got a thousand years of first hitch. Praise God. And then we've got forever and forever. Praise God to take our turn in the reality of heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Amen. It is the wrath of the Lamb. But is not the wrath of the Lamb upon the Lamb. It is not the wrath of the Lamb upon the Lamb's body. It is not the wrath of the Lamb upon His church. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Where did the book come from? Amen. Seal with seven seals. Let's go back, back, back. Praise God. Scenes in heaven. Chapter 4. Elders sitting on thrones. Praise God. On back, back, back. Revelation chapter 3, 21. The last promise to the churches. He that overcomes will sit down with him in his throne. Amen. Let's go back a little farther into the first chapter. And he said, I want you to write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are. We can go all the way back. We have backed up to the things which are. What are the things which are? That's where we are right now. The things of the churches are still going on. Amen. The body of Christ is alive and well in the earth. And folks, even the Antichrist can't be revealed because there's somebody in the way. There's somebody holding him down. There's somebody restraining him. Amen. The angels can't be loosed out of the Euphrates River. The portents of the wrath of God cannot be released on the seat of the Antichrist because the Antichrist hasn't even taken his seat yet. He must roam around. Many Antichrists doing all the damage he can where he can, but he can't be revealed. He can't take over. Amen. Because Christ behind the scenes is still running the show. Amen. He's still got his church in the world for a very good reason, too. That whosoever will might get saved. 
Amen. He's got his church in the world to obey the great commission that Richard was talking about a while ago. Praise God. Go to all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. He is still taking out a people for his name. Acts chapter 15. Amen. God did it first. Visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. He's still doing that. What? And who are the people for his name? That's the church. Amen. That's the body of Christ. That's the one that bear his name. Hey, we're called Christians, folks. And I'm glad of it. Amen. I'm proud of it. I'm glad to wear the caption. Hallelujah. I am a Christian. Aren't you glad you're a Christian? Are you glad to wear his name? Or are you ashamed of it? Are you ashamed of his name? Out yonder on the job? Are you ashamed of his name at school? Are you ashamed of his name before the teacher in high school? Are you ashamed of his name before the college professor? Amen. He said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father and his holy angels. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. That brings us back to the wrath of the Lamb. Six seals are opened in the sixth chapter. Amen. Terrible things happen. Heaven departs as a scroll. Every mountain, every island is moved out of the places. Stars of heaven fell to the earth. Even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And it scares men to death. And they want to hide. Because they said, the great day of his wrath has come. Folks, now is the time to find a hiding place. Now is the time to get under the blood. Now is the time, praise God, to sell it with God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to notice that six of those seals are open. And there's a parenthetical chapter. Amen. In the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation that tell us about a revival in Israel. They have such a revival in the first half of that tribulation period that 144,000 get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And miraculously preserved through the tribulation. Amen. Ah, the church is like Enoch who was raptured before the flood. Amen. The nation of Israel is like Noah that God took through the flood. Praise God on the ark. Ah, yes. Parenthetical. That means all during the time of the opening of those first, of those first six seals, in fact, seven seals, Amen. Because the seven seals is opened in the eighth chapter. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. Amen. There's worse things yet to come. Amen. The sixth verse, the eighth chapter, and seven angels, which had seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. I want to tell you folks, the tribulation is going to get worse. Amen. But the saints have escaped. That is, the church saints. The first ones. The body of Christ. Amen. But then, the gospel of the kingdom that has to do with Israel. The gospel of the kingdom must be preached. Matthew 24, 14 and 15. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all nations for a witness. Then shall the end come. Amen. Hallelujah. There will be 144,000 missionaries 
that will preach the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. To the ends of the earth right during the tribulation period. Supernaturally kept. Supernaturally preserved. Supernaturally anointed. Amen. Joel chapter 2 will have a more complete fulfillment. When the moon turns to blood, the sun is black as sackcloth of hair. Signs in the heavens, blood, fire, vapors of smoke. I will pour out upon my servants and my handmaidens my spirit. Amen. And in Jerusalem. And in Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Amen. What a time they're going to have. With the sun turning black, the moon turning to blood, and the heavens shaking of of the stars like a fig tree of its untimely figs. Amen. Blood, fire, vapors of smoke, wars and rumors of war. Amen. Great terrible things happening in Palestine. Amen. The things you're seeing today is like children playing house compared to what's going to be in the great tribulation in Israel. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Those terrible things will go on as each successive angel sounds his trumpet. By the time you get to this ninth chapter, five angels have sounded. Amen. And the star fell from heaven and the earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and to open the bottomless pit, and there rose smoke out of the pit. Amen. Today, our kids are entertaining themselves with horror, science fiction stuff. Wholesale today. Amen. Just ordinary, common old ordinary cartoons and TV shows don't entertain them no more. It takes horror. It takes the morbid. It takes science fiction. Amen. To tickle their fancy anymore. They are case hardened so badly. Amen. That they are jaded and hardened to just ordinary entertainment. Oh, I'll tell you what, hell's really going to open up after a while. And horrible things are going to happen in so much that men are going to seek death and won't be able to die. The tribulation gets worse and worse. And worse. Praise God. Each successive angel sound until the last angel sounds. Amen. And there stands ready seven vials to be poured out of the wrath of God. Amen. But just before the wrath of God is poured out, God takes those ready ones out. Amen. Twelfth chapter, woman clothed the sun, moon under her feet. Amen. Travailed in pain to be birth, to, to give birth. Amen. And the dragon was ready to devour her child as soon as it was born. She gave birth to a man child. Amen. That woman we know by the Old Testament to be the nation of Israel itself. That man-child now, we know, amen, is that 144,000, praise God, that great host of Jews, elect, amen, that have given their lives to God and have served God faithfully for the first three and a half years of a tribulation period, praise God, and a number that no man could number have been converted, chapter 7, amen, ah yes, and come out of great tribulation, amen. You say, I didn't think anybody was going to be saved after the church is gone. Oh yes, that's when God's going to save Israel. That's when Romans chapter 11, all Israel shall be saved, will be fulfilled. Amen. That's when God's going to revert back 
graft them back in again to their own olive tree. Amen. That's when the apostate church is going to be cut off. And they'll all join together with all the religions of the world. Islam, Catholicism, Baha'is, Buddhism, Shintoism, Amen, apostate Protestantism, will all join together. Amen. And the great whore will have her headquarters in Babylon. Corrupt religion will get together. Amen. She'll drink the blood of the saints. That's the diehards that get saved during that tribulation period. Amen. She'll be drunk with the blood of the saints. She rides on a scarlet colored beast. Amen. Is the great whore the Catholic Church? Amen. That's just a small part of it. There are billions of other religions that will all throw in together. Amen. And just as fast as it can happen, folks, the media of this world is pouring everybody into one mold, pouring everybody into one cookie cutter, and making everybody think the same way. Amen. There's going to be some that's not going to do it. They're going to see the light. Amen. It'll be late when they see the light. It'll be in the time of Jacob's trouble. The church is already gone. The sun has already risen and set on the church. Amen. They're already in the presence of God. Amen. Not only have they escaped, they're calling the shots. Amen. But God saves a great host of Israelites. In the twelfth chapter, that man-child is caught up to heaven right out of the clutches of that dragon. In the fourteenth chapter, we find that the 144,000 are before the throne, singing a song that nobody can learn. No man in heaven can learn except the 144,000. There's already a whole bunch in heaven. (laughs) There's already a whole bunch made it. Amen. They made it in the middle of the week. Hey, amen. And the beast has power for a time and times and a half a time. Three and a half years. Amen. Folks, even the 144,000 didn't go through the great tribulation. That's the last half. They even escaped the wrath of God. Amen. I mean... God just about runs out of preachers. Amen. And so he said, I'll give power to my two witnesses. He just got two. For three years, he just got two preachers. Amen. He's so long preachers that he has to summon an angel, calling the angel to fly from one end of heaven and preach the everlasting gospel. Amen. What happened to them? They all went to heaven. What happened to them? They're all standing before the throne, singing and shouting and glorifying God. Amen. Where did you get those two witnesses? They'd been in heaven for, amen, several thousand years, and he sent them back because he needed at least two witnesses. Amen. So for three and a half years, Enoch and Elijah come back and preach. They've got a debt to pay. It's appointed unto man wants to die. And so they come back. Amen. All through the Old Testament. Amen. We have hints that they're coming. The last prophecy of the Old Testament in Malachi, I'll send you Elijah the prophet before that terrible day comes. Amen. Ah, yes. Amen. Here they are, two of them. He said about two by two in New Testament times. His own ministry. Amen. So now he's going to have two. Two witnesses. Praise God. Amen. Another angel will fly from one end of heaven to the other. Praise God. And he'll say, come out of Babylon, my people. What in the world is going on anyhow? 
I'll tell you why God don't wipe this face of this world clean instantly, immediately, with one great big bang. And here's why. He wants to save a remnant. He wants to save a few more. Amen. Joel said, Amen. And in the remnant whom our Lord shall call. Peter said, And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. James said, Amen. He shall at first visit the Gentiles to take out a people for his name, Acts chapter 15. Then he'll return. He may rebuild the tabernacle of David. That be residue of men. That's why he'll wipe this earth clean. Amen. He labors to save a few more. Deception has gone deep. And it takes tribulation and wrath and judgment to jerk men out of their deceptions and cause them to pray. Amen. And He'll save a few right down to the last. He'll call them out of Babylon. Amen. Angels will preach the everlasting gospel. Two witnesses will prophesy and shut up heaven. He may rain not and perform all kinds of miracles. Call fire down out of heaven until the Antichrist is successful in killing them. Amen. But right now, none of it can take place. Power of Antichrist is crippled. Amen. The power of sin is hindered. Why? Because a church, the body of Christ, is still here. And you can get in it this morning. As they sing, and as we stand, come today. Father, challenge our hearts, Lord God, to escape the wrath of God. Challenge our hearts to escape the wrath of the Lamb. Challenge our hearts to escape for these last days. Take advantage of our opportunity. Oh, it is ours now. And thank God for it. In Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. While they sing, let's pray. What said I hear? Is it the sound of a trumpet? I feel the touch of a much better place. And if I am dreaming, please don't awake me. Soon the eastern sky will part. Let me be a kind of Lord. Let me be one of them. Men often dream of a far away land. You'll be left here when the church is gone. And it's leaving soon. Oh, but it's You'll be left down here when the rapture takes place. It's much And it's going to take place soon. You are escape from the church when they make their escape. That I have and they're going to make their escape too. And before. Come on. Come on. With the white pearly gate. Jesus. And the father who waits. Fire be open door.